In this tutorial, we're going to guide you through how to set up the vectors that you can see on the screen in front of you. This layout ultimately is going to be used in a subsequent tutorial in the 2D and 2.5D machining section to show you how you could go ahead and apply toolpaths to it in order to cut the finished sign. So let's go ahead and start a copy of the software and begin our example. So let's create a new file. We're going to make the job size for this 30 inches wide by 42 inches high. I'm going to work with the XY origin position in the center. Our Z0 at the top of the material. And we'll go ahead and work with one inch material and hit OK. I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. I'm going to go with the anchor point in the center. I'm going to go X0, Y3. I want a radius internal corners with a radius of 1 inch and I want the width of my shape to be 19 and the height to be 31. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Close. Next I'm going to go and draw a circular vector x0, y0, diameter 13. Create. I'm going to select that. Select it again to bring up the transform handles. I'm going to hover over the center one so when I click and drag it snap to that and I can snap to the midpoint of the bottom of my rectangle. Next I'm going to take each of those vectors, we'll use the offset, offset inwards by one inch and create the circle and offset that inwards by one inch as well. So two separate offsets we've just created there. Next we're going to start to create the text for our sign. So I'm going to go into the text, the draw text tool and I'm going to select a font here um, which is actually called LHF Orchard Regular. Uh, this is a letterhead fonts font and uh, if you want to check their fonts out it's www.letterheadfonts.com and we're going to type in Merrill's and make this five inches high and hit apply close. That selected we'll just hit F9 to center it. If you don't have this font or you don't wish to buy the font then you can just go ahead and use a similar one or one of your own choosing and substitute the letters in there and in a minute we'll size them uh, more precisely so that you'll be able to um, follow along in much the same way that I am. Next we'll grab that and I'm going to go ahead and just change its size so I'll say set selected object size and with the link XY unchecked I'm going to say width 22 height 5 hit apply so we stretch that text out a little and then I'm going to shift and select the rectangle and align to top. Next what I really want to do in this case is align the top of the letters to the top of the sign and not the apostrophe so if I want to see that distance there I can use the measure tool come over to the measure tool I can snap on a point at the top of my text here snap at a point at the top there and I can see that the Y distance in this case is 0.5809 so what I can do is select that and I can say move selected objects 0.5809 so you have to make a note of the value or remember it we can see now that the top of that text is lined up with the top of the sign I can take the text with it selected, I'm going to offset those vectors and we're going to say offset outwards, create sharp corners 0 0.75 and that's going to create a box for me that the text is going to sit in. I'm going to select that small inner vector we've created there and just hit delete to get rid of that. Next we're going to come back to the text tool and using the same font and same size I'm going to type in the letters BBQ, apply close and with those selected I'm going to shift and select this bottom circle and I'm going to use the center objects so that centers the text into the circle. We'll come back to edit this in a second but before we do that I want to go ahead and create some more text. I'm going to change to another font and this one is another letterhead font called Parma and I'm going to type Memphis and hit apply, close F9 to center that in my job and uh, you'll notice here that on this font and on quite a few fonts there may be some letters that are very close together or even overlapping and a useful tool to move these apart is the edit text spacing and curve function here. 
So while this is still a text entity, I can click on this and I can either click between letters to move them closer together or if I hold the shift key down and click between letters, it'll actually move them further apart. So here you can see I'm just going to space out between some of these letters that look very close together, give myself a bit better distance between them. And next I'm going to go ahead and take this text and I want to get rid of these accents that are in here for my particular sign. So I'm going to convert this object to curves and select those two objects and delete them, grab my text and say Control G to group that together. Next I'm going to distort that text and so I'm going to create some curves to help me do that. I'm going to draw a rectangle, I'm going to make this width 22, height 7 and I'm going to put it in at a position of 0, minus 7. Create, close, select it, go into node editing, I'm going to uh, hover over this end span here and hit D to delete, hover over this end span and hit D to delete and then I'm just going to select the top one in a second. You'll notice the start node for this bottom one is on the left here, that's the green node. So if I select the top one, I can pick that and hit P in order to change that direction so that both of these are flowing in the same direction, which will give me a good result when I distort my text. Next, I'm going to select this bottom vector. I'm going to go into node editing and hovering over the span, I'm going to hit A on the keyboard to turn that into an arc. And I'm just going to drag that up and just eyeball an approximate position, kind of roughly halfway between the text and the top of the circle. Uh, you Really, a lot of this design would be done in a much more sketchy fashion when doing it uh, as a sign layout. Here, so to help you try and um, follow along, I'm trying to use more specific values and settings. So now I'm going to select my text. I'm going to hold Shift down and select the bottom curve, Shift and select the top curve, and we're going to come over to the distortion tool. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to choose the option to say between two curves and hit apply. And we should see the text distorted there. Now what it's done, because it's uh, the top line is shorter than the bottom line, I'm getting this leaning in a little bit. So to try and correct that, if we just hit F to fit this, I might grab the outer node here, this top node, and use the left arrow once and then grab this node and use the right arrow once to try and straighten that up a bit. And that makes the text look a little better in this case. I like the way that looks. I'm going to go ahead and close that. I'm going to select the top and the bottom curve and delete those because they're just construction data. Next I'm going to select my um, text here and I'm going to use the offset and I want to offset this outwards three quarters of an inch like we did at the top but because of it's a more rounded font I'm going to say don't create sharp corners I'm going to uncheck that option hit offset now I can see I quite like the shape I've created there but I've got some kind of inner fuzz going or shapes going on here and some quite sharp points coming down here so what I'm going to do is just close that I'm going to hit control Z to undo it select it again and I still want to be three quarters of an inch away when I'm done, but this time I'm going to start by going an inch away and hitting offset to get a slightly less pronounced curve. Select that curve, say inwards 0.25. So the result is still a curve that's three quarters of an inch away, um, but it's got a more of a soft curvature to it than it had before because I offset it a little bit further first before coming back in to get the correct value. So let's go ahead and edit the barbecue text. Make sure that you've hit uh, F to fit the window or up here to zoom to fit so that you could have it at the same zoom that I do. Next we're going to select this BBQ text and we're going to go over to the distortion tool, distort selected objects, select the bounding box and hit apply. I'm going to take the top node here and move that out three cursor key hits, one, two, three, out for the other side, then the bottom one in three, one, two, three, and this one in three, one, two, three. Next, I'm going to take that, right mouse click, and go convert to curves, which will take it out of its distorted state and put it back to being individual vectors. I'm going to grab each of these and hit Control G on the keyboard to group those to make three separate groups, one for each letter. Selecting the middle B, I'm going to come to the set selected object size, I'm going to say link XY, and I'm going to make this 6.5 high. Now I'm going to select the B, and using the arrow keys again, 
move that out three and select the queue, one, two, three, move that out. Select all of these and just click again and use the arrow keys to just jog them down to get them in the position that I want them to be in the circle down the bottom here. Next, with them all selected, I'm going to say set selected object size. I'm going to unlink the XY and I'm going to make them have a width of 9 and keep the height of 6.5 and hit apply and close and my barbecue text is now in position there. Next we're going to go ahead and bring in the graphic which is going to go into our sign here. In this case our graphic has been supplied from the Vector Art Mega Collection. Uh, you can find uh, more about their designs at www.vectorart.com here we're going to go ahead and say file import and we're in the file folder you should find the file called pig vector art with some numbers eps hit open there's our graphic there and it's put that on a layer with the same name as the imported artwork and what i'm going to do here is toggle the layer manager switch off layer one just hide this click these vectors again to select them so that i can click and drag and we'll make them uh, roughly the size that you see here. You can see that's about 21 inches high if you want to set that more precisely. Next what I want to do is take just the graphics, uh, just the part of the vectors for the head. So I'm going to just drag a rough box around those. I may select a little more than I want, like I don't want the finger and I don't want this part of the, the uh, shoulder. So I just want the ones you can see selected here which is essentially the internal head vectors and the collar. I'm going to right mouse click I'm going to say cut, then I'm going to grab everything else and delete it, right mouse click and paste that back in. Next I want to offset these vectors, so I'm going to grab this, I'm going to say offset selected vectors outwards by 0.25. Hit offset, we close that, I'm going to zoom in here and there's a couple I want to get rid of. You can see this offset, this small one down the bottom here, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go ahead and delete the ones between the ears here. I'm going to keep the ones in the nose and the mouth and these here and these are going to be the vectors that we're going to v-carve between when we come to machine this. I'm going to go ahead and take the outer vector for this. I'm going to uh, so just click the wrong icon there. I'm going to offset that outwards by 0.4 offset, close, delete the inner vector that we created there, grab all this and I'm just going to go ahead and hit Control G to group it. I'm going to right mouse click, move that onto layer 1, come to the layer manager, I'm going to delete the import layer, come back to layer 1 here, hide that, and now I'm going to go ahead and select that and say set selected object size, make sure link XY is unchecked and type in a width of 15, a height of 15, apply, close, F9 to center that, and then I'm just going to click it again and holding the shift key down to keep it locked in the middle I'm going to drag that up and just eyeball so that it's roughly halfway between the two blocks of text that I have. So at this stage we've created most of the vectors we need for our part. There's one last vector I do want to create which is the vector um, representing the silhouette of my side. So I'm going to go ahead and take a copy of these four vectors, so we're going to select the two vectors that surround the text, the main sign uh, rectangle and the circle, right mouse click, I'm going to say copy to layer, new layer, and we'll go ahead and call that outline. I'm going to make it active and OK. I'm going to undraw layer one, and with the outline layer, I'm going to hide this with all those vectors selected. I'm going to say weld selected vectors. As part of my machining process, I actually want a vector that's further out than this outline, so I'm also going to offset this outwards by 0.3 inches. They've both been created on that outline layer. If we switch back on layer 1, we can see the other vectors we've got there. Essentially, at this point in time, I've created all the basic vectors I need for this sign. To complete this, you'll be able to go and watch the tutorial that's located in the 2D and 2.5D toolpaths section on the tutorial disk. At this point though, I'm just going to go ahead and say File, Save As, we'll save this in the appropriate project folder and it'll be called barbecue sign vectors.crv. Hit Save 
and that's going to be the starting point when we come to actually create our tutorials. That concludes this vector drawing tutorial.